Okay, so yesterday we worked on the land piece, and now we're going to come back in to do the clouds in the sky. And um, if there needs to be some touching up on these mountains and these trees to make them come together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and start with my skies that, um, can I see that? Yeah, so it's sort of like a bank of clouds. It's a little darker, a little more purple here and a little more um, te teal blue here. And it kind of covers up some of these mountains just a little bit. So I'm going to work on that first to set that stage. Um, let's see. So we're coming over here, and what I want to do is kind of find those colors. I'm going to take a little bit and see where I'm at. Take a little bit of this darker and see where I'm at. It's a little bit uh, too light. I wonder if I add this to it. it needs to be a little more purple. So these, these few colors over here are ones I've not used. All of these are colors I've used, but I, I've put all the uh, land colors off on to the side and then I put more of what I would call the, the sky colors up over here. So um, this is a little bit green even. So let's see here. Let me take this kind of purple here. And what I want to do is, yeah, that's a lot better. Um, come up with that set of colors that's going to get me as close as possible. So here's the ones that I used. I used this guy. Um, this one and this one. In fact, I think I'll just leave these sticks over here so I can keep track. And then I use some of this purple. And I'm taking um, this purple's in the right. And I'm going to need more purple. Now this is going to start in over here. Now it's not real tall. I'm not, I'm not even going to worry about going over this mountain here because it's got a little bit of a haze to it all the way up to about here. So I'm going to go that direction. And all the way down to here. And down into here. And out this way. Okay, so let me see if I've, I don't want to make a gigantic mess of this if I don't have to. So I'm just kind of moving this paint on here a little bit. And it sort of um, has that purpley color and it actually goes more purple this way and a little, looks like a little more teal this way. I'm going to wipe my guy off here. Let me see. darker here. Well, it still has purple in it. It's kind of deceiving, <laughs> as always. Okay, let me see how this works over here. Yeah, it needs more purple, that's for sure. So I'm going to Yeah. I'll go 
back to my original color. Add that in. It's going to go all the way across here. Um, it doesn't go down over this mountain here, though. It just goes down kind of over here. And let's see if I can make some more. Now there's a spot in here that's a little lighter. Let me see. Kind of maybe this light. Let's just try that. Uh, maybe add in a little bit of, of this little whitish color. So I'm going to kind of come down here and that had a little white on there. I'm just going to come across here and hit this guy in the background. Now down in above these mountains it's a little lighter. I'm going to just bring it down. one right back up in here now interestingly it it takes a dark twist way right over here so, green twist over here. So let's see if we can. Okay. So I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do here is just get in some of these main colors. As close as I can. And before I go too far, I'm going to make sure my strategy here is correct. I'm going to take a um, brush. Maybe one of these more stiff kind of brush. It's not a, um, it's not a soft brush like the sable just kind of tap it in here maybe maybe just tap it first this way and I'm gonna bring those colors down in that's probably a better strategy for me I don't know if it'll be the same for you and just kind of get that color um, to be less There's like a lot of paint on some of it, because what really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get um, well. I don't want to take it so that I can't see anything behind there. Um, you know where I put the paint on before. I want that to show through a little bit. But um, okay, and part of this is probably going to need to be. Take it off a little bit. Okay. 
You want to see the land, but you want it to be kind of um, hazed over, if you will. Now, this color looks a little funny compared to the other colors that were there, but I'm, I guess I would say I wouldn't be surprised if that's um, because I'm making more accurate colors right now. So I'm, ta I'm going to taking a sable brush and just lightly coming over some of these edges. some of that off. If I have too much paint, I'm going to bring this guy in. And I'm thinking cloud. I have to paint the cloud, be the cloud. <laughs> and back this way. Hit the bottom of these mountains in the back with a little bit lighter, if I can get it done. In fact, um, I think I'm going to take this thinner brush and see what I can do here. So I'm kind of going with the similar colors. I want it to be over the top. I want you to see that mountain. Then I want you to um, see that it's covered with these clouds. So. Yeah. So it's sort of got a mysterious look to it. And this fellow here is... This little mountain over here kind of stands out by itself, but... I always seem to have a little trouble getting that. I think I've seen it so many times I don't, you know, I don't really, um, I make up some of it in my head or something. So I come across here and I'm going to, I'm just going to keep doing that. I think that's working okay. And I'm going to come back across here and really, um, take the edge off of those so they really have a now these yeah I want them to kind of um, blend in but way over here they're not so much so um, okay. maybe just work this pattern in a little bit more didn't seem too bad. Um, okay. Um, then I'm going to go walk over this side, I guess, and see what happens over here. I still have an aura on some of this, and um, that's what's giving me a chance to see those those um, mountains in the back. But, you know, what looks like one big old range of mountains, it's really a whole bunch of mountains here. Okay, I'm going to scoop in here. No, I'm not making it absolutely identical. Um, I 
to have a flow to it. I don't want you to stop at these mountains too much. I just want to, it's got to have a good flow to it. And um, Let's go a little bit darker on this line down here. And it almost, um, I'm putting, you know, this is funny. I'm just going to put a little of this blue right on top of these trees, too. And I can still see the th trees through here. It's just that they're so green, like so bright green, that if I put just a little blue over them, they play as being in the distance a lot better. So I want to hit that um, bright green with the blue just to send it backwards. And I think that's going to really help much better and a little down in here um, so that's your big secret for going you know towards the back is even if you paint it the way that you think it is the way you see it if it just seems like it's not blending backwards very good just a little bit of blue like a grayish blue on there booyah okay I think that looks better okay so that's got me started here now the question is, is where did you go next? Now I think hmm, well there's a couple ways to go. You could take the sticks if you've got sticks that are fairly close in color. You could go back in like you did the very first time and just use the sticks straight and um, blend it in. Um, I think I'm going to be, um, I'm going to try something here. Just see if I can. Okay. You know, I'm for, before I go doing that, I think I'm going to just go ahead and keep putting it on with my palette knife. Um, I feel a little more comfortable doing that. Now, then I can come back in and um, okay. Yeah, this is a good. So I'm coming in with some of these other clouds. It doesn't have super great edges on there right now, but I'm getting that color in a little bit. And I'm going to put this brush down for now. And try to match it up a little bit here. So well, this is fun too. So I'm go as I go up here, I'm picking this color, and then I want to do what I always do, and that's um, try to make make it all kind of um, work together. So this looked a lot more purpley all of a sudden, and so if I add in some of this greener color, just to the top, you know, I don't have to remake everything. Um, that works pretty good. So, let's see here. Let me go more of you guys. Um, So I have something coming 
right up in here. up like this. Um, bring it around. Um, and it comes. Oopsie. See how bright that is? That's not really what I wanted. So I'm going to go up in here and then I have a darker version of that. Oh yeah, dog's at the door here. This is, this could be somewhat tedious work. And we're gonna bring this in. Sometimes, you, you know, here's your problem when you're doing all this knifing work, you gotta get back to the same spot you're at and not get losing too much focus if you can help it. Uh, sometimes that works for me and sometimes it doesn't work for me. This would be probably slightly easier to do with a smaller piece, but you just have to have patience to keep moving forward. Now, um, let's see here. Alright, 
I'm going to try something different just to see how it goes and if it goes good it's just show you. Now as, as these clouds um, go up from the horizon they can get kind of bigger so let's just see what happens. You know, if we go really gently over, now first thing you got to do is make sure it's cleaned off proper, properly so it'll go on good. Um, that one is sort of, let's see how this works. Just gently going over it and it takes a lot less time but you only have one color so um, I'm gonna just and, and, okay so I'm barely touching this so I don't know if you can see that but it has um, just goes over the canvas and a little bit goes on there at a time and then you could add other colors too if you wanted to. So let's uh, let's go up here like this. All right and then I kind of coming in here. applying this with the hand to, for me is a lot more um, it's a lot easier for me and it makes it a little more fun <laughs> you got to be careful as you go up the sky that the color isn't didn't shift on you a little bit and then you should pick up a different stick but really what I'm doing now is I'm just putting in some darker the darker colors and I'm going to be putting in the lights later. Um, let's see here. And you know I'm not so sure that it has to be identical necessarily to what you I guess I probably say this all the time. I'll just say it again. It, it, I'm trying to make it fairly close to what we're looking at but um, the point of it, the whole exercise is to get the gist. Okay, so um, this color is coming off as being pretty green. And so as I'm going to go up, let's just put a little in here. Okay, um, and let's see. I don't want to miss out on my continuity here. Okay, so I put this guy up. And mm, 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 mm. some sort of a purple. Now, I might need to look at, and this is um, a lot of junk on my hand. Okay, so this is something that I haven't shown I don't think here but um, I have all of my colors I've put on little sort of um, well they're like chips that you get for paint on the store at the store and so when I wanted to, if I see some color that I'm not quite hooking into, I can um, I can put it up against there, see, and see which ones, you know, if I, do I have all the, the colors that I needed. So I'm looking for something that's kind of a dullish purple, and actually this permanent violet three might actually do the trick. So my question to myself is, do I have that? Okay, this is a reddish one. I don't need to be too red. And then I have 
Okay, so the permanent violet three, I have it out already. So I'm going to clean that off and maybe come back in here. And I figure out where I'm at. All right, so come up here a little bit and out. And one thing about this side um, is that you could literally, if you wanted to, let's say you really like drawing the colors in, you could um, take a, a razor and just cut it and make a more sharp edge on it if you were like wanting to draw it in. Which I find, it, you know, I've done that before, but it didn't really make as much uh, of an impact for me. It, it didn't really work all that great for me. So I, I don't do it. Now, this guy's coming up here, and coming across here, and coming across here, and up here too. Now, you know, this is the other thing. So, you're trying pretty hard to, to get the right color. That's super important to try to do. But, you're also working with paints, and no matter which brand you use of any kind of paint, whether it's in a tube, or whether it's... Um, you know, in sticks or pastels or anything, uh, you have a limited, um, well, being as color is like uh, a very, very, a spectrum of endless color. No matter how many colors you pick, you're still going to have less colors than you need. But sometimes, you know, the, the advantage to just go ahead and do your, your work with the colors you have and, and be able to adjust to it being not the same exact picture. Now some people are like photorealists and they, um, you know, e there's even differences in what they do, but you know, it looks so real that, um, yeah, that you, you, if you don't see the photo right next to it, you don't even know. Okay, so this is getting up into the Have to do this now. This is getting up into the um, the shiny zone, so I'm going to take this tape and move it forward a little bit, so I can see. Um, and there's probably a little bit of purple can come up way up into here. Um, this is quite the beautiful color, and up into here. Um, to finish that conversation, I think that you know we're we're painting, and so um, the paint itself is you know has a life of its own, and so even if it's not identical, unless you really want it to be, you you can do a lot with the colors that you have. So, um, all right, okay, so. I have used purple, by the way, down in here. I ask myself this question a lot, you know, do you, <clears throat> everything has every color and it all reflects off. So <laughs> you ask yourself, well, once I mix all these colors, do they still work that way? <laughs> and I think mostly they do. Um, I'm going to take now, uh, what am I going to take? Um, you know what, I have a, sometimes you let that go and you think, oh, is it going to fall over? Okay, so I have, um, kind of a, it's called sandstone, and it's not a bright, um, orangey color, but... It might actually work with this purple a little bit. Um, nope, it's too too orangey. So uh, before I go make a big mess of it, I'll go with a peachy. Yeah. Let's see what I get. See, it's got to be. It's got to have a life of its own. And by the way, this peach is something we've been using. So 
I'm going to just stick that in, get a little life back in this painting. Um, So I'm essentially I'm kind of right back to how I started it with one color at a time and um, come down in here just the lightest of touches um, and we're going to come back and kind of make these things blend together in in pretty much the similar way. Um, I always think I'm going to be able to do a lot with that um, that knife but it's like very tedious when it's too big. And I'm just trying to get a glow on here. Um, there's a little glow in here. This is such a, you know, it's so much fun. This is why I love the peaches, is because they um, do set up a glow. And I'm going to come up here and even up here. You don't want to lose my. I don't want to lose my footing on this and then have the whole thing fall on the floor. Okay. And a little bit up here. And um, what's really neat is this is this actually is time of day when um, it, it's not evening, it's morning. But out here, you know, I, you know, it's a funny thing. This is funny to me. There are artists that have said, and I've run across a few of them like when I do my research that there's this big difference in color in the morning and the night and I don't know if it's because um, it's so dry here but I don't see it you know um, like the shadows they say are a little bit more um, I don't know milder or something a little more bluish or whatever. and I think well if you were in a very humid place and I used to live in Minnesota so that is a humid place, and and the the actual shadows there were so much milder. You know, I could see right into them. When I moved here, I they're so dark, like especially in the summer. And um, I am not a big fan of you know snakes and such. And you can't even really see the dang things, you know, because it's so the shadows are so dark. I think, oh no, what if I don't see them? You know. <laughs> And uh, they, uh, at least I still have my hearing, so I'm good. If they make a rattle, sometimes they don't even make a rattle, so that's aggravating. Okay, I'm going to stick a little down in here, in sort of my blind spot, and a little here and here. Okay, so that was a good color, I think, to, to add on to that. And it does make, and actually had a color here, it does make this... Um, I guess I guess what I would say is is it does help this painting uh, come together because of the the same colors at the top and the bottom. Now this is one. Um, not sure the name. It's like a coral color. I'm gonna take that one too. It's a uh, not as dull. And we're gonna see what we can do with that. Why not? Okay. So I'm gonna add just a little corally color to it. Here and there, and um, down in here maybe. Now this um, coral color, uh, I don't have to put it on every spot, right? Because then they all have a little different depth to them. Um, so this typically, you know, it's just a really oh gosh. See, I can make this um, painting look prettier. I mean, it's dynamic painting. It's so cool. It's a great paint, you know, like photograph. And the day was wonderful. But, you know, you can, if you use some of your secret tricks to it or whatever, you can um, up the ante on it in, in some really great and mysterious ways. So I'm going to go this route and hit this guy. Now this little peach color brings some of these forward. So I'm going to stick with that and let the others just kind of sit back. All right, now the next thing I think is, actually there's this little green here. 
I have this green. I don't know if it's um, it's maybe just a little bit of an older stick. So I'm gonna just stick it in. Um, and it's funny too because it plays as kind of a white almost. So I'm going to um, start adding in some of these lighters and bring this down here and around here and hit some of the So I'm actually focusing on the lightest parts right now and try to keep keep with the feeling of the photograph a little bit and just hit it, hit it, hit it a little bit up here. Now one thing about doing it this way, you're going to have to hit it eventually with some sort of a brush. So. You know, if you leave, if you put a little bit of extra paint on there, it's probably going to be um, mellowed out anyway. If you don't leave enough painting, it's going to get too mellowed out, and then you're going to have to redo it again and again. So, <laughs> I kind of got to that point where it's like, I, I just assume not have to do, um, you know, I don't mind going over the piece purposefully, you know, so far as... Uh, it, it is a process, and so you do that. But sometimes when you just do the same thing over and over again, it just reminds you that you might have um, to learn a little more <laughs> so that you don't have to make mistakes. Mistakes do cost everything time, no matter what you're doing. So I'm going to move this bright spot here. And I kind of bounce around when I paint too, you know, like I do with my eyeballs. Not intentionally so much as I just... I just kind of move around um, from point to point. So I have to kind of revisit my steps, watch, you know, where did I go? Did I forget something? Did I miss something? And way up here, I've got a lot of jazz going on up here. And a little bit up here. Now these are coming towards you, so, um, and then there's just a little bit of something, something back here. Now that could have probably gone with a yellow or something. Okay, so that was a green, and um, now I'm going to see about this, this is a kind of a... It's not really a, well, it's called a warm white. It's not a um, brilliant white it, or yellow. It, it's sort of a yellowish color. It's just not brilliant. So I'm going to come in here to pull all these colors together. And um, so it comes across as a, as a really nice yellowish color. Um, I think that kind of brings all these peaches and greens together just a little bit and it's um, most most of the clouds that we call white aren't really white at all and so um, <laughs> I think it's because we we teach um, we teach children and when we were a child we were taught that you know clouds are white and all that um, because just generally speaking uh, if you don't have to paint them or anything, you know, th that's just a very rudimentary way of uh, discussing um, the clouds, just so that everybody has a common language, I guess. But if you have to paint said clouds and you're trying to get a realistic look, you have to realize that that was all um, very, very rudimentary. And... I think that's just how you learn. We just end up not really, uh, most people don't end up getting you know, getting the education moved forward after that to the point. You know, if they don't like artwork or they don't have the opportunity to look at artwork, 
and paint it, um, they don't have to learn anything more than that. So, you know, white clouds, white clouds. It's like no white clouds. Unless you have like a super important spot, you might hit it with white. So I am going to come down here just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to take, this is actually called ivory, but it's pretty close to white and I'm just going to hit the top part. Um, you know, having said that whole thing about white, it is very little that, but I just want to hit um, a few spots to really give, um, you know, just to give where it's really showing up as light. Um, I do have a white also, but this is very close to white. It's just a little bit different. And I'm going to um, be going in here next and um, maybe blend what I have in so far and then hit the, the other spots. Um, like in between a lot of these, you can see like a, a little turquoise in there. Um, those spots are like the last thing, so I'm going to hit the these clouds and see what I have. And um, if there's other uh, spots that I need to hit, then I'm going to pop those. I call it popping those. So um, these have to be blended a little bit. But I'm just trying to find the light spots. It's pretty windy out here. And the lightest stuff touch around here because I might be able to get uh, some of that uh, sort of looks, I don't know, sort of silvery or something. Um, just to give the these other clouds a little dimension. This is lighter. And this, I'm going to hit this guy here and here and up here. Now the thing to try to look for, I have to always remind myself to look for is is it lighter underneath or is it lighter over the top and depending on where what time of day it's at. Um, it, the clouds might actually, you know, have have the white over the top and other times of coming from the side. So you have to um, remind yourself where in the cloud is this light coming from. And this gets a little lighter. And this is a little lighter. And a little lighter here. Over here. And then something around in here. Always remind yourself to look at the the dead spot in the middle. You can move yourself and look at it. Okay, so now let's um, see if we can't get the get these clouds kind of lined up. All right, so I have a rag. I have my picture. And I'm going to do the tapping and tap and pull if you need to to get that color where it needs to go. Now remember this, this is coming down over these mountains a little bit. And um, lost my darn. Okay. And down in here and coming up here. Um, So I don't really want my mountains to be too dark. You know, they can be dark, but the red's in there, I guess. 
should be in the oranges um, should be kind of popped in. Okay, so now we're going to move it up and hit. You're looking for the edge of it, of the colors that, where they come together, and you're just going to pop it now. And follow your design good and then it comes up here a little bit and then there's this guy up here uh, it isn't very the picture has a little more detail on that purpley color underneath there but so I'm I want to you know stick I can actually do it I have a strategy to do that stick with the darkers first stick with one color at a time. If you stick with one color at a time um, before you, you know, if you're going to switch colors, make sure you wipe your finger off. Your, I use my pinky finger because it's a little more, I don't know, it has less dexterity so it doesn't um, interfere as much. It's just tapping these little beads of color down so that um, if you get a brush to it, it won't. You first of all, you won't have to brush as much, and when you do brush, you because brushing, I always find it just kind of um, it can dull everything down a little. Uh, this reminds me of um, like the pastel days. I was at uh, some gathering of artists, and I was sitting next to a girl who a girl, she was a lady. But I'm old, so that's I'm still a girl. <laughs> anyway, she, she um, I had just started um, doing the pastel. I had no idea what I was doing at all. And she sat next to me, and I was, you know, rubbing it in. And she goes, don't, that's, you're doing it wrong. That's exactly how she said it. You're doing that wrong. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she said, well, if you, t if you brush it all out that way, if you rub it very hard like that, then what's going to happen is you're going to end up with um, all of the little particles lay flat and then they aren't sparkly. I'm like, oh. So I went home and I tried it her way and then of course it looked just like hers. So I of course changed it. <laughs> Not because I didn't like what she's doing, but it's like the whole part, point of it to me was is we're all supposed to do our thing and so I use that I keep remembering that I never did forget it and I think in the end um, it served me well because in certain parts you want it to lay flat in certain parts you want it to be duller and the same color but duller so it does work out for you it's just that you, you could kill uh, the most exciting parts of the painting by d doing the wrong thing so um, this is sort of a mm, um, A cautious way almost, it's not quite, but it's a cautious way of getting these colors um, into the right spots and filling in a lot of this canvas and before you hit it with a brush. Because that brush is, you know, important to do. It is literally an important thing to do. But uh, let's get real. If you, if you get too crazy, then... Um, you've lost you've lost kind of the the life of the painting okay is a much faster process than just doing it with the um, knife. The knife is really good for smaller things, especially if you're going to leave them chunky like down here. Um, I always try it though. I always have a tendency of wanting to try this in the sky and all that, but um, I always seem to want to go back. So I have this feeling like I want it to have 
the absolute correct color and be right all the time. And so when it gets to that point where I've already um, done the first step of making the colors come together, it almost seems um, like, oh no, what am I going to do? Just, I'm going to end up messing this whole thing up then. <laughs> and I, I'd be surprised if, you know, that isn't a very common thing is that, you, you, you know, this is wet on dry. And, you know, I... It was a stumbling block in my mind. Like, what? A, how do you even make that work? And it's still just stick with the process, and the process will carry you through. So that um, that makes some nice cloud there. And I'm gonna take my glasses off because then I can see the peripheral a little bit better. So I'm gonna take this um, bigger. Um, Mm. You know, before I do that, though, I think I'm going to go with my blues. So I have a very, um, yeah, I have this blue that I had used before, and it's so pretty. And this greenish color, okay, let's go with greener. So here's the secret to this now, if there's a secret, is, um, I'm going to look between the clouds and hit these just in the sweet spot in between the clouds. So right here, there's a little sweet spot. And it doesn't have to go edge to edge, it just has to be right in the middle so that when you pop that in, you know, um, you still have your sky color in there nice and fresh and um, gorgeous. And it's just like peeking through. Um, and the one thing to remember about these skies in this stage is really important too, is that where you look at this sky, it looks like greener towards the bottom. And I can even put a little bit down in here just to bring back this aura and um, to calm this purple tunnel. I mean, it suddenly it just looks so purple to me. Okay, so, um, but you really want to go green to blue to more of a purple blue if you have that much sky in showing in your piece. Because um, that's kind of how it goes. Now... green coming up over here, right and left, and a little green up in here, and this is sort of blue, a greenish blue, and it'll play as that green, and what about in here? So the closer you get these colors to look, um, yeah, right, now so it, let's say you've got your clouds perfect the first day, just perfect, and you didn't want to touch them. You can still come back in with these blues here and there just to reinforce that um, really cool look. And so now you're going to come up here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to still take a very light, um, a very light approach to this just to bring it up farther even though I'm going to change colors just the tiniest bit so that it all has a cohesiveness to it. And there's blues in here by the way. And just up far enough. Now, okay, I think that's pretty good. So I've gone way a little bit higher than I normally would, um, just for that color. But I'm going to take now the next color, which is this um, more metal tone. Make sure I have it set up right so I'm not... It's gorgeous, by the way. Okay. So, now I can go back on this green and hit the top of it because 
it's under the cloud but over this green blue here and it will transition really easy so you can also go over this lightly and you want to put that in where it's going to show up now this has got a little more oh i'd say it's got a little more purplish to it it's um very middle of middle tone though I mean this is not like real purpley and even this this picture it doesn't have a lot of um, it gets darker than this I guess okay so um, you are trying to be true to the piece and then you get hair in your eye okay so um, down in here, okay, and then we coming up here, and we're going to go up a little bit in here, just to tiny bit, tiny bit. have to probably I may not have to um, redo the whole part up here but I need it to be come together anyway I need it to be consistent so okay now I'm going to go in and um, okay so let's um go back and I, I've hit this of course so let's tap it in one more time now it would have been see this would have been smarter for me to put that blue in before I tapped in the clouds but because I didn't think of it then I just didn't do it so you know, it's not the world's worst problem in the world, but um, it'd save you some time. Okay, so now I'm going to come and just focus on these blues, because I did do most of these clouds, and I just want to, if it has to get set up, if the, like if it got, like if the stroke got in the wrong spot, or it's just uh, not quite lined up right you can fix a little of that here and then um, okay so you want to be careful not like the blues okay so if the blues hit an orange it's going to change the vibrancy of the blues so you kind of don't want to mess with that too much Feather that up there. Right. So you can always tell where you didn't tap it, it's you know, looks all bumpy. So try to get, get it all fixed, finished out here. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I think I'm just going to turn this palette off for now and then I'm just going to continue. I'm going to take my brushes and start to brush it. I take my glasses off again and I'm going to uh, just, just pop these. Okay, so of course you have stuff on there. Okay. I'm just gonna maybe take this bigger brush and kind of off to the side here and 
you know, just um, blend some of this blue right up in here. Uh, so. Hit the blues first if you can because uh, it's the farthest away I can even put in some of these light rays you know I'm extending them okay and I'm bringing it up to these clouds but like I say, you don't need it to go into the yellows and the, the oranges. The yellows, it'll just turn greeny. And, and that's... Maybe it's okay, but you have to really be hoping that's what it's going to do. Okay. Now, I think I'll just put this to the side here. Um... I'm going to tap, I'm just going to pop these, you know, to pop, tap, pop, tap. The reason I rubbed it into the top there was mostly because um, this is all, was finished out the last time and I just want to really blend it in and it has some purples in there, it has a bunch of texture already in there. If I'm lucky I'll be able to just, um, work these without having to redo the purple. Just, you know, that'd be nice. So now I'm getting kind of into um, smaller sections. So I'm going to go to a little smaller brush here. And it doesn't hurt me to, to go from the top down because, as you recall, it's going to be um, greener down here. So I'm going to um, just stick with coming from the top down, just in the blues. greens. And nice green in there. Okay. So now we can um, get my rag here. Okay, so I'm going to, once again, just pop these mountains a little bit. Okay, 
then we're going to work our way back up here. And in a lot of ways, it's just the same thing that you always did. Just hit the edges. And if you want to blend a little something, something, that's cool. But if you hit these edges, now there's some little fleck. Okay. So I'm getting my edges. I'm getting some of my direction. I'm getting a little bit of a mist going here on these mountains. And when I get next to these uh, lighter clouds, I have to be kind of careful and um, wipe your brush off so that you're not um, smearing the wrong stuff. Now see, right in here where you've got your green, um, it butts up to it. And remember, the cloud is over the sky from where you're standing. So um, when you get to those spots, um, hit that cloud so that it makes an edge over the sky. You can clean up this little sky right now and then come back with the cloud. And you don't want to leave... Oh, I'm going to just kind of hit the purples and the blues first just to, you know, just to keep it off from mixing too much together. and come up here. Now I can um, lightly tap these edges of this lighter color. I'm doing exactly what I said I wasn't going to do. <laughs> it's funny. But see, okay, so here's why I changed my what I was going to say. Um, I'm not used to putting a lot of words you know, around what it is that I'm doing, so um, sometimes I make a mistake. But these clouds over here are farther back than these clouds up here. So, um, you know, they can be tapped in. They can be a little bit less um, bold. So you, if you just tap them in, you're going to end up dulling them down anyway. So that's all okay. But when you come back up to these blues, make sure you wipe off this brush pretty good so you don't carry that too far now this guy's coming up here like this so I'm gonna go in the direction of this cloud and hit this blue a little bit and I'm going to bring this smiley face up here and I'm going to yeah. Now, even if you left these lighter ones for later, you can absolutely do that because you have to be so careful. But I, you know, I hope I explained that properly. So these guys back here are dull. So if you just now, now maybe just sticking with the blue and the edges of the clouds and, and, and those edges a lot of times are the purple. So you you just want that blue to, to look like it's behind the purple. And wherever you see it, it needs to have that feel of sky. So it's got vapors and it has direction and it's probably moving and all this other. Um,
I'm not going all in one direction with this blue, but I'm trying to get it kind of smooth looking so it stands out against the cloudy part. You know, okay, so I just get done saying that you can smooth that out a little bit. But also, you know, I, well, I say that because it's smoother then, but in a lot of ways, if you um, don't smooth it out, you know, like, uh, 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 but just kind of back and forth it, you can leave a little sparkle in it. Um, it's just that it's going to be a little bit smoother looking because it's sky than where there's the vapors. Okay, now then, let's see. Um, okay, so I think what I'm going to do is maybe take a This brush but it has all this purple in it so let me try to get all that out of there so now um, I'm gonna come in to where these um, main clouds are and I'm just I mean I'm just hitting the very edges I don't want to lose all my color here now um, I want it to look very realistic and I need it to be cloud-like. And, and the real secret to that is, if you can do it, is just hit those edges. I try not to get, you have to move it, you know, and you're giving it direction, but you don't want to you don't want it to, um, you don't want it to look like land. <laughs> you, you want it to look like it's floating and it's moving and it's changing all the time, but the, the edges have to be real cloud-like. So, um, just be doing this and keep doing this eventually then I take it into the other room and I look at it with a different light and um, finish popping it out there now let's say I go in here and I and I accidentally um, make everything look dull and <laughs> I laugh because that's like the easiest thing to do so let's say I overbrush it somewhere. Maybe I overbrush the whole thing. What I'm going to be looking for at the end is are there any little places that need to have a special additional pop of color? Now those might be places possibly um, that would require a, uh, um, a painting knife because the painting knife leaves enough paint on there so that it isn't dulled down but if you can get some of this done, you know, to your satisfaction, you may not have to do that. But, um, like, there's pops in here. 
and the pops let you give the viewer a chance to know. There's like a, kind of a, a guide to letting them know where you where you're trying to get them to look. between colors here a little bit. And there's a line right here. Do you see it? So I'm going to try to... I don't know... Sometimes it's hard to know why that happens. Maybe you don't move enough or something. Um, you know, to so that your hand just is in automatic mode or something, and it goes makes a line. But uh, what I want to do is fix that. <laughs> I'm just fixing it as I go. Maybe it's even the material sometimes, and occasionally, if you have a big enough um, canvas, it it might even be the stays behind there, the, you know, whether they're wooden or whether they're metal, they, they can sometimes be, if it's just really a lot of material, it can actually touch those and the stretchers of, or, or the stays, whatever they're called. Um, that'll create a line. And then that's a little tricky to Maybe the trickiest part of the whole thing on the, this stage is, is that, you know, you, like the little dots, they still have to have, even though you don't want to lose all that color, you know, all the brightness to it, you still have to have a look of, of a cloud and not just a glob of paint. That's just me. You know, um, you can do whatever you want, <laughs> but um, if you want it to look more like a sky, you're going to, you're going to have to hit those edges, probably. Um, I don't end up, you know, I, I watch a lot of people paint, you know, on line and stuff like that. I, I like to see how they do it and, um, the cloud people, the sky people, you know, they all have their own way, and a lot of times, depending on where they live, you'll have different kinds of clouds. Like, I don't have a ton of thunderheads, if you will, you know, um, that just kind of blow up. We see them sometimes, but we have a lot of wind, too, so, you know, um, we end up with a lot of different shaped clouds. Which I think these are. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working my way and um, behind this cloud. So if I'm gonna move a little of this white even back here, if I have enough paint, right? So, um,
a lot of people make some of these tops with um, kind of a uh, kind of a rounded top brush. I use a, a bright and I just use the side of the brush a little bit to get some of that. Um, I have a harder time with those rounded, more rounded brushes myself. And I don't know quite, you know, I'm not sure if that's just stubbornly I learned this first or <laughs> maybe it, it could be. But um, I do think that, you know, it's it behooves you to try to figure out which kind of brushes that work best for you and then go with them and stick with them. You know, um, and you can try and try whatever you want to try. I have like a billion brushes and I have expensive ones, less expensive ones. And I almost always end up feeling like, okay, I can figure this out if I have a, a bright, but it is absolutely not the, the same for the next mind and hand over, right? Like this, this works for my kind of thinking, whatever it is, and um, doesn't work for everybody else. So that's how that works. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take this out into the other room now, and um, so it's pretty it's pretty close to done. If I need to add more colors to it, then that's what I'm going to do. But um, I hit this just a little bit. And I will put a picture of it up here unless there's more that I have to do. So um, thanks for spending all this time watching. I really, really appreciate it. And um, please let me know if you have any um, questions or anything. Notions, ideas. I sure appreciate hearing about it. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.